And I want to give you some principles that I hope you'll catch. And, and please write these down. One of the things the doctor said, Wayne, when you go on this little break, you got to do everything that just fills your tank. Would you write this down? The first is, is you got to know what fills and what drains your tank. You got to know that. It's sort of like this, and I'll draw some stuff on this board, but uh, it's sort of like you have an emotional tank here, and you've got a drain, and you've also got an input. And if your, your level sort of, of serotonin or your emotions are at, at a high level here and it's full because you've got some good input coming in, wonderful. You can do all kinds of stuff. But if this drain becomes greater than your input, you begin to decrease in this sort of level on the inside. And when it gets to this first mark here, it needs to be almost like alarms going off because what will happen is you'll have an anxiety attack and you'll feel it. Alarm should go off. If you don't start to fill, it'll drain down to the second where you'll have an emotional breakdown. And if you ignore it, and like me, just was a continued, uh, just a dead leader running, if you're not careful and gets down to here, this is where they say you have a nervous breakdown. But alarm should be going off at each level. And you need to know what fills your tank and what drains it. And you need to write that down. For me, sports, I ride a motorcycle, I, uh, I paddle out in the ocean, I love to read, do devotions, travel with my wife. Those are some of the things. You need to know what fills your tank. And, and during this time, I had to do only the things that filled my tank. There's some things that drain. Too much counseling for me drains me. When I've got unresolved problems at home, when I have staff that uh, have uh, unresolved problems and, and they just continue to go on like it's, they live on a level of mediocrity, it just bothers me. There are certain things that really fry me. These are uh, overtaxed schedule, uh, overbooking myself, inability to say no. These things drain me. Now, what happens is when you get too busy, now watch this. When you get too busy and the drain gets to in, be increased, what happens is when you say, oh, I'm just too busy, I can't play basketball anymore, something that filled your tank. I'm so busy in the ministry, I really can't take time to ride a motorcycle or I can't do paddling or I can't take the time to read or do this or that. Why? Because I'm too busy. Then when that happens, that's called suicide because if... If you've got an increased drain and you shut off your input, guess what's going to happen? Do you know when my schedule gets busier, you know what I do now? I increase my play. In fact, right now, I'm on a five-day motorcycle trip. I parked my bike in Billings and flew here to be with you. And when I get back, I'm getting back on, going through Yellowstone. You, the busier your schedule, the more taxing the more you increase your fill. But what's our, our proclivity? We usually cut off the fill because we got too much drain. Do you understand how nuts that is? But we do that all the time. You write down what fills and what drains. And here's what I'd like to give you as an assignment. You then have your spouse do the same thing. Have her or him. You, you have them fill out what fills their tank. Just things, ask yourself these three questions when you say, what fills my tank? Ask yourself these three questions. The first is this, what am I doing and with whom am I doing these things and where am I doing it? Where I, when I do these things, I feel most alive and I feel the fullest. Can you remember those three questions? What am I doing? With whom am I doing these things and where am I doing these things? That when I do this, I feel most alive and I feel the fullest. That'll help you to think through what fills your tank. And you've got to know yourself in that way. Because when the times get tough, you're going to have to make sure. Because you can handle all kinds of drain if you've got a lot of fill coming in. But if you don't, 
you're in trouble. And as ministry gets more complicated, the drain increases. And that which used to fill your tank is not going to keep up with the drain. And so you've got to measure that. Then have your spouse do it. And you've got to know what fills her tank. And then this is what I'd suggest that you do. When you're done, you switch papers. You give your wife or your spouse yours. She, your spouse, gives uh, you um, hers. And then you use that as a prayer list over the next month. And you pray. I pray for my wife. that Lord, help me to be someone that helps her fill her tank in these ways. And help me to alleviate some of these drains. Do you know what kind of friendship you'll start to develop if you'll do those two things? It will help you immensely. Some time ago when we first moved to Hawaii, uh, we brought our kids, the grandkids left mom or grandmother in Oregon. And, and uh, we moved to Hawaii. And what I didn't know was one of the things that really filled my wife Anna's tank was talking with her mom about the grandkids and all of these things. So she would call her about every two days and she'd spend an hour on the phone. Now, I'm just brand new in ministry and, and when the phone bill is a hundred and some dollars a month from her calling her mom, I just flew off the handle. I said, you can't do this anymore. You're going to take me to the poorhouse. I can't handle this. If you're, you want to talk to your mother from now on, you have her call you or you call her collect. I was a compassionate man. And, and I said, and you can do that once a week. And you know, my wife is so sweet. She said, okay, and she complied. But you know what? After about two months, I noticed my wife was changing. She was becoming the wicked witch of the north. And I thought, what is happening to her? And what I didn't realize was her sharing her life with her mom as her best friend was something that really filled her tank. And me, not knowing what fills her tank, actually, I was cutting off stuff that she looked forward to. You think we become good friends then? And the things that drained her tank, I was demanding she do more of. Our marriage was getting really thin really fast. And then I understood this, and we made some changes. And I said, honey, I'm so sorry. You, you and your mom are best friends, and I have been so blind. You call your mom as often as you want to. And she didn't abuse it. But I tell you, 100 bucks a month, 150 a month is a small price tag to pay for a happy wife. <laughs> now let me tell you the kicker. She started calling her mom again and she just turned back into the beautiful lady that I married. And let, here's the kicker. About a year and a half, her mother died. And you think about it. What would my marriage be today if I had stuck to my stupid guns and her mom passed away? Do you understand what would be going on in our life? This is incredibly important. If you'll learn what fills and what drains your tank, it'll save you years. It might save your ministry and your marriage as well.